The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. So, uh, before we get into this week's movie, Bunny, I was thinking about this just now. Um, have you seen the? Sh- Did you at all see the show The Leftovers? That does not sound familiar to me at all. Okay. I believe it's on Showtime, I think. I'm not exactly sure. But it's a show based on a, a book, and it, it was done by the guy who did Lost, Damon Lindehoff or whatever his name is, the guy who did Lost. Yeah. And it was a really big deal. It lasted three seasons, and then they finished it because they just got to the end of the story. Yeah. It, they just recently did their last episode, and people were freaking the hell out about it. And uh, it's it was an artistic darling, and it won Emmys and shit like that. And, and I didn't watch it at all. And the reason why I didn't watch it is a long ass time ago, I read the original book, The Leftovers. Oh. It's by the author Tom Parada. And this is this is the premise of the book and the premise of the TV show. One day, two percent of the population just disappears, and there's no explanation as to why. Some people think it's a rapture. Some people think aliens. No one knows what happened to these uh, to the two percent of Amer- of of the world that just yeah. disappeared. And so the 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 series, the book, the the show picks up like two years after the day that everyone disappeared and tensions are high and there's cults and and the religious fervor and 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 fights and riots and yada 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 yeah and i read the book and it's a really good book and it's really depressing and really sad and i abs i i enjoyed the book until i got to the end because the whole book is centered around this mystery Two percent of the population just disappears. What ha- happened to them? The book never tells you. Oh! In, in fact, the book really doesn't end. Like no plots are tied up. There is no happy ending for these people. They just reach an ending. And it took a while for me to realize. Okay, this is what the author wanted. There's no clear cut answers in life. There's no clear cut answers in this book. No one knows why these people disappeared. No one's happy here. Nothing's been tied up. That's just life. I understand that's what the author is going for, yeah. and I respect it. That doesn't mean I have to fucking like it. The leftover sucks, and I will always hate it. Yeah. So when I heard that they were making a TV show, I said, okay, this. I don't know if this is going to be good. And then when I heard it was by the same guy who did freaking Lost, I'm like, oh, no, no. I'm already tapping out right now. <laughs> there is nothing you can do. There is nothing you can do that will make me like this show. And so f- for the last like couple of years, I've been like a guard. And so I see like these bros and they come in. Hey, do you have to book the leftovers? Yeah, it's right over here. Are you getting the book because you want to know what happens to them? Yeah. Like, why did these people disappear? OK, let me tell you right now. Doesn't tell you a thing. Really? Like, is it a series? No, it's just one book and it doesn't tell you a thing. <laughs> it's still a good book and if you want to read it you can read it you will have fun but just to let you know if you're buying this book to find out what happens to these people it doesn't tell you a thing <laughs> so i may not have gotten sales from that but i was honest with people yeah. you know you know i mean it's brutally honest the grief. yeah saved them saved them the freaking grief so they just recently ended the series, and it, it, it's it's apparently a beautiful show, and everyone needs to watch it. But I've been firm on my stance that I am against this show. But then recently, within the last two days, I learned something about the show. And if anything was going to get me to watch the show The Leftovers, this might be it. Yes. Okay? So 2% of the population disappears uh-huh so the the guy who did lost damon linda hoffer whatever he knew that the show was depressing and the show was sad and the, the show was a real downer and so he, he added to... fraggles no he did something weirder okay. he did something weirder than that okay you're actually surprisingly in the ballpark <laughs> all right 
He wanted a small bit of levity. So what he did is there are numerous scenes in the first season where everyone is watching the show Perfect Strangers. Okay. And at one point in time, someone mentions just off the cuff the remark, you know what's odd? The entire cast of Perfect Strangers, they all disappeared. (laughs) We're all raptured or whatever. Yeah, every single cast member on this show, they are all gone. Wow. So then, so then, uh, apparently I read an interview with Mark Lynn Baker from Perfect Strangers, and he did a, he did an audition to be like a psychiatrist at, in season one, and eventually they had to tell him, sorry, we you can't be in season one. Yes? Wow. Uh, You can't be in season one. We want you to be in this part, but you've already been on the show uh, on every TV. (laughs) So we can't we can't have you then be a psychiatrist, but we'll let you know if something happens. So then in season two, they added to this weird uh, perfect strangers thing. So in season two, there's a small like 10 second news broadcast that they show where it's where it's they show that everyone from Perfect Strangers was raptured except for Mark Lynn Baker. But he was so ashamed that he hid out in Mexico. So everyone assumed he was raptured. (laughs) So he's just been in like Mexico doing drugs and becoming like a shaman and shit. (laughs) <laughs> so they got mark oh Lynn my Baker. god He's so like, so so now so now in the mystery of the two percent perfect strangers now now figures into that as yeah. part of the mystery right because yeah. that's got to so, be a big fucking question why why yeah. did that whole cast you know yeah, what's why the did common Bronson element there so. Yeah, why did Bronson Pinchot get taken up, but Mark Lynn Baker is still stuck in Mexico doing blow on some hooker's ass? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then in season three, they brought him back for a major role where he plays himself and he has this important news to deliver to one of the major characters on the show. Okay. Like, I'm not exactly sure why The Leftovers is so obsessed with the sitcom Perfect Strangers, but God damn it, if you were to find a, one way to get me to want to watch this show that I promised myself I would never watch, it's by having a bizarre connection to fucking Perfect Strangers. <laughs> That's odd. Yes. Real odd. Just wanted to say that. Um, Wait, when did the show come out? Um, it, it literally about three weeks ago, it had its last episode and it ran for three seasons. Okay. So I don't know, uh, three and a half years ago, I guess. I believe it was on Showtime, maybe Cinemax. I don't think it was HBO, but it's one of those type of networks. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically, we're a paid TV network and we want to have a Game of Thrones too. <laughs> So they got a book, they got a a famous TV guy, and they said, make magic for us. And instead, they made this like three season small art TV show. Yeah. That is supposed to be beautiful, but I refuse to watch it because I know it's not going to give me a happy ending. I know it's not going to tie any loose ends. I know that I'm just going to be left hanging, just like fucking Lost. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I thought. As soon as you told me the book, the book did not have an ending and you said they got the guy from lost i was like well there you go yeah exactly <laughs> they yeah. don't they don't know how to solve a mystery <laughs> yeah. so yeah perfect strangers real weird well then mecha bunzilla this week on the podcast we are once again taking a first rung movie a new movie in theaters and taking it apart, which is something that we do from time to time here on the show. Yeah. Going all the way back, going all the way back to our Guardians of the Galaxy episode, which we covered and fawned over way before anyone else. I would like to think. I would be wrong, but I would yes. still like to think that. 
Yeah. We've done other big name movies while they were still new in theaters, like La La Land, Lego Batman movie, Doctor Strange, Jurassic World, Casablanca. Yes. We were the first podcast to ever cover Casablanca. We recorded that episode way back in 1942. I, I was negative 35 years old back then. I was so young. Yes. I was Indeed. such a, a young green chicken. I still had my, uh, still had, I, I was still a sperm back then. <laughs> So we're really excited about that. So we thought, what the hey, let's do another brand new movie in theaters and just have fun, take it apart, have fun. That's always a blast. Let's do it. It's so popular. It's going to be a win-win. It doesn't even matter what movie we pick. Oh, Mama Papa, no, it does in fact matter what movie we do. <laughs> because instead of doing a fun, smart, cool, massively entertaining movie, we're doing yet another freaking Pirates movie. And yep. I'm not talking about the very cool and entertaining $8 million porn movie with Jesse James and Deacon Presley. No, <laughs> not that Pirates. This week, we're unexcitedly discussing the 2017 Johnny Depp mortgage payer, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. They yes. wanted to name the movie after a line in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. So it was either going to be Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No, no Tales, or Pirates of the Caribbean. That's the line that the dog says who has the key in his mouth. Yes. <laughs> that a pirate and a sailor trying to reach. They were also going to name it Pirates of the Caribbean. Twang, 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 twang. <laughs> That's the banjo that the mysterious guy in the bayou plays before you go into the pirate cave. Look, it's an entertaining film, sure. Johnny Depp is Jack Sparrow. Yeah, it's a fun film. Yeah. Real fun time, sure. The opening where they try and fail to rob the bank. That's pretty damn uh, entertaining. Zombie sharks. That's all fun. Granted. But I don't know. It's the fifth freaking one, and I'm just burned out. I've got pirate sickness. It's, it's, it's time for them to go into space. Yes. Or, here's another idea. This, uh, I want something different, something new. So I've got a small list here of some ideas that you we can do because Johnny Depp did Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland is a ride at Disneyland. Yes. So and and now Johnny Depp has done a Pirates of the Caribbean movie, which is another ride at Disneyland. So let's just get Johnny Depp and put him in some more Disneyland rides. Uh-huh. So a yes. small list here. Uh the Enchanted Tiki Depp. Essentially, we get Hawkeye out of the Enchanted Tiki Room. We just put in Johnny Depp. It, it probably wouldn't be that hard. Yeah. There's already a couple of different audio animatronic Johnny Depps in existence, so we can just get another one, put him in there. Space Mountain, but with scarves? Space Mountain with scarves, yes. Yeah, because Johnny Depp, big fan of scarves. Just get a lot of scarves and bandanas. Boom. <laughs> Here's here's a good one that I like. It's a Tim Burton world after all. Yes. Just get rid of all the tiny foreign kids and put in John uh, Tim Burton characters. Mm -hmm. That's a win win for everybody. And now, and does it does it slowly degrade into where Tim Burton really sucked? Yes. Yes. It absolutely. Does. Good. At the end, your your entire boat is disintegrated by the Martians from Mars Attacks. <laughs> Which is always fun for the kids. Uh, this next one is... What happened? what happened? Eleanor. Okay. So I gave, she, she wanted something, so I gave it to her. It was a supper thing for the toilet tank. And? She must have thrown it out of the fucking car before we got to the register. So you didn't buy it. You didn't buy one of the main things that you came into the store to get. I attempted of Eleanor. to. I know you attempted to. She's grounded. Eleanor. You are grounded. Small man, Ooh. 
Wow, your armpits smell like Scentsy. <laughs> you have Scentsy armpits. How did you do that? Baby powder. Okay. Well, no, did you use Scentsy on your armpits? No. No, okay. Arm deodorant. Okay, arm deodorant. Okay. Scentsy well, you're deodorant. having me smell your armpit on the podcast. I need to cover all my bases, figure out what's going on here. <laughs> Now, this next ride is a bit of a stretch, but hear me out on this one. The Jungle Ted Cruise. The Jungle Ted Cruise, okay. I think Johnny Depp would play a pretty good Ted Cruise. Okay. Put like a fake big on Put like a fake big nose on him. Give him like like short hair. I think he would do a pretty good Ted Cruise. Yes. I I I, I think you're correct. And you know, and he's such a professional. He would be able to get the voice down and everything. Yeah. Yeah. I think he would. Mm-hmm. Now, this one is my favorite. Adventures through Inner Deck. Okay. You get shrunk to microscopic size and go into Johnny Depp's body. <laughs> Adventures through Inner Deck. The gift shop is in his colon. Yeah, yeah. So, the freaking pirate movie, it's good. It's a good movie. It's a well enough film. I like the woman who is smart, so people automatically think she's a witch. Yes. And when you look back at, like, the first Pirates movie or the first couple of Pirates movies, it's obvious that this woman is what they wanted Kira Knightley to be. Like, I imagine that Gore Verbinski thought that Kira Knightley was playing a strong feminist woman when she wasn't. Yeah. So this, so this is like Disney's, okay, strong feminist character, take two. <laughs> so I like that. That's a fresh approach. I like, of course, I like Johnny Depp's Captain Jack. This is the tale of Captain Jack Sparrow. And I like how this film is very much sort of a mirror version of the first. What? She's putting corn chips on the floor. She does not like corn chips. She likes licking them and getting all the salt off and then getting rid of them. Maxwell is going to present us with his new look. Oh, Maxwell's presenting us with his new look. Okay. Maxwell had a makeover. I'm happy. Uh, Okay. Max uh, Emerald is, is... Oh my god, Maxwell has uh, eyeshadow and makeup, and, and what are you doing with your... He wants to make sure you see his lipstick. It, 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 okay. Yes, your lipstick looks very, very no. nice. No, what are you doing with the hands? That's, that's what I'm confused about. Oh, you have nail <laughs> polish on. Okay. My god, you look beautiful, hey. Maxwell. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's Pride Month. Pride month for him to look beautiful. Yes, you look look very beautiful. What did you say? Look at my hand. Look at no, keep your head right here. Look at just there you go. You look adorable, Maxwell. You look great. You look sassy. He chose all the colors. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. That's freaking adorable. Maxwell had a makeover. Nice. We'll post it on Facebook. Okay. Natasha's posting it on Instagram and Facebook. He's very proud of his makeover. He chose out the nail polish yeah. and everything. He chose out the nail polish <laughs> and the, the lipstick and everything. Oh, yeah. No, those are great pictures. Oh, wow. Look at that. He's he really. He would not sit still. Yeah, I can see that. I can keep the selfie. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. That's great, Maxwell. Yes, that is a very pretty picture. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't on. it doesn't translate well to play podcasts with them. Play with showing them. me pictures, <laughs> but still, I, I appreciate your I trying. Like I, I uh, does learn. Maxwell have a beauty mark? Maxwell kissed her on the cheek, and now oh. she has Maxwell. Oh lips. yeah, yeah, you got Maxwell lips on you on your cheek there, Bella. So, um, oh yeah, so when they were making this new Pirates of the Caribbean movie, they said, "Hey, let's harken back to the first one," and I like that because the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie was the one good Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And, and, and I was, I was like, even that one I just felt was kind of serviceable. I mean, it was a good movie. There was nothing 
it was fun, oh. you know, but like, oh. I don't know. I, I just haven't been a fan of any of the pirate movies. And this one just felt really just tired. Yeah, it's weird that it's a a, a a two hour movie that feels eight hours long. Yeah, that's never a good sign. Yeah, but um, but yeah, no, it, it, it's a good movie. It's not a great movie. See, like I didn't, Javier. I didn't like the bank robbery because it was just stupid. You know, I mean, I don't, I didn't like I don't how... mind if they do impossible things, but stupid impossible things. Th- those horses are not dragging a building. It's just not. Yeah. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Javier Bardem does not do it for me. Yeah. I have, I have never seen him in anything before. The only knowledge that I have of Javier Bardem is the fact that uh, Beck Bennett from SNL can only do like two impressions. And one of them is Javier Bardem. And he does him way too much. Because, again, he has no other impressions. <laughs> So he's so was that, was that Legolas, Legolas's son? Javier Bardem? Yeah. No, Javier Bardem is the Mexican Salazar dead guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so uh, Beck Bennett tries it, it, it gets uh, his Javier Bardem impression in like every other episode, and it's not even that great. It's just hello, my name is Javier Bardem, and I would like to have sex with you. Like that's his entire impression, and so <laughs> okay. I've never seen Javier Bardem in anything before. So when I realized that I'm watching this movie, it's like, who's the who's the bad guy? Ah, oh, shit! Beck Bennett is the bad guy. Boo! <laughs> like I know you're not Beck Bennett, but no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I don't like Beck Bennett as the bad guy in this. Also, there's some very unconvincing CGI in this film. I thought I was watching a Sharknado. Again, I thought I was watching an Asylum film for a while. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, because I am not and that, believing and like that, the first... And that ending, that... Like, the whole ending sequence, oh. like, yeah. they, they weren't really giving you any to grasp onto to, to keep any kind of track of the spatial acuity, you know? Like where the yeah. fuck are we? Are we under the water? Are we in the water? Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. I mean, there was nothing to like be able to visually grab onto to distinguish yeah. much one thing from another. Yeah, yeah. The first film had undead Jeffrey Rush and all of his undead skeletal people, and and he, Jeffrey Rush. God, he's a fugly dude. He is a yes. fugly. He is a fugly ass dude, but, but it, it had. I wish I seasons. wish I could see him more in stuff because he's he's a brilliant fucking yeah. actor. That dude. Yeah. I loved I I loved him as Casanova Frankenstein in Mystery Men. Oh That's God, I yes. Fell in love with Jeffrey Rush. The remake God of The House damn. on Haunted Hill. He did a very good. Oh yeah, I forgot about that too. Yeah, The House on Haunted. I hated I. It, I I loved and hated that movie. Yes, in equal amounts. Yeah, but and also, fuck Paul McCartney. Oh, always. Fuck yes. I forgot that he was in this film. He was in it. Yes, you didn't see that. That was Paul McCartney. Yeah, I I I. I had heard that Paul McCartney had a cameo in the Pirates movie, and I saw that they released a poster with with Paul McCartney's pirate character. Uh. So before the movie came out, I knew that Paul McCartney was going to be in the film, and then I must have forgotten about it until Johnny Depp's uh, Captain Jack is being led down the hallway to be killed, and someone singing a pirate shanty. But wait a second. It sounds like he's singing Dirty Maggie May. Isn't that from fucking... (laughs) Uh, from Let It Be. Oh shit, he's in this film, isn't he? And sure enough, <laughs> as he's being led to to be killed, he runs into like his uncle Jack, or his uncle John, and he's the one who's like, 
Oh, hey, you know, I've been waiting here to be tortured for an hour. I hate the service. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I I told him the old joke about the skeleton. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. Like, oh, fuck you, Paul McCartney. (laughs) Fuck you so hard. Maybe I just didn't care. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But no, he's got like a piano in his fucking cell, and he's singing uh, Maggie May from Let It Be. Yeah, in his cell, it's not, it's not cool. <laughs> I, I it's like of all the cameos, I can't stand that one. Mm-hmm. But it, I, I'm, it, it, some other good things, some other good things about this movie. Snatch. Snatch. The movie Snatch. The movie Snatch. It's Brad says... Pitt, Jason Statham. Okay. I don't think I I've seen it. I love that movie. You haven't seen that movie? I love that movie. It's the one It's the one movie by a guy. What's his name? Guy Smiley? Guy Pierce? Guy... Uh, yeah. Guy Fierro or... Guy... Not Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie. Pierce, guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie, there you go. Guy Pierce was the Mandarin <laughs> in Iron Man Three, and yes. Guy Smiley is the talk show host from the from Sesame Street. Yes. Uh, guy Ritchie, it's the one Guy Ritchie film that I can watch over and over again. It's just really, really good, and it features Jason Statham. And it's funny because Jason Statham is a comedy actor, and he's really funny. And he was hired for Snatch because he's funny, and he's a funny comedy actor but it was on the set of snatch that like in between sets he's doing like kung fu and like working out and shit and guy pierce looks at him and goes what the fuck are you doing it's like i'm working out and then guy richie's like you know what you should maybe you should be in an action movie and he's like no i'm more of a comedian but then they put him in like an action movie or two and now he's just an action movie guy (laughs) so he stars in the movie see guy richie Guy Ritchie is one of those guys who who really had a, a, a promising career, you know, much like Danny Boyle had a very promising career. He came out strong with um, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, and then he had a couple of other good movies there. Yeah. And then he fucked Madonna. Transporter. Uh, yeah. Then then he fucked Madonna, and that was it for him. Yeah. That vagina yeah. has he ruined more careers. What? He has not been able to make a good film until Madonna, since Madonna took his life force. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so the movie Snatch stars two, like uh, bookies, bank robbers, uh, various. It, Two London underground uh, criminal type guys, and they're BFFs, and it's Jason Statham and the other guy. These okay. are the two. These are the two. These are the two guys. One ended up being action superstar Jason Statham, and the other guy is the other guy. I have never seen the other guy in anything at all, and I've always wondered what happened to the other guy because everybody else in this movie. Okay, there's fucking Benicio del Toro. There is uh, 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 Dennis Franz. There's Brad Pitt. Here's all of these famous people. Okay, what happened to the other guy? Who's the <laughs> other guy? He plays the, the character. He is in this Pirates of the Caribbean movie. He plays the character of Scrum. He's the one uh, member of Captain Jack's crew that they make into the captain just so that he can be beaten up. Okay. They they remove his they remove his uh his toenail so that they can pick the lock. You're breaking up. Remove his toenail in prison. I'm sorry. I, uh, uh. Okay. Uh. Let me see if there's. Okay, I don't think that helps. Does that help? No. Let's give let's give that a try. Sometimes I don't know how to... 
sometimes if you, if you just are quiet for a little while, I, I think it, I think it has something to do with the buffer, possibly. Okay. Uh, all right. I think it's better. I, I can hear you better, at least. Yeah. I can hear you a lot better. Um, but anyway, the other guy from Snatch, he plays the character of Scrum in the new Pirates of the Caribbean. He's the... He's the pirate that they remove his toenail in order to pick the lock to get out of prison, to get out of jail. Okay. He's like one of the funny, he's like one of the funny pirates in Captain Jack's crew. Anyway, I'm excited that the other guy who's not Jason Statham from uh, Snack is in this movie. Yes. And another thing, what happened? Because I rewatched all of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies before I watched this no! new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. What happened to the two funny guys? What two funny there guys? Were, yeah, there were two funny guys that were in the first three Pirates movies. One was a, a fat, bald guy, and the other one was a skinny guy with a fake eye that kept popping out. He, oh, the, yes, yes. The, yeah, the guy with the fake eye was the original Dwight Schrute in the British office. Okay. Uh, I, I remember him from the first movie now, the guy with the eye. Yeah, he was also in the second movie and the third movie, and then he wasn't in the fourth movie, and he's not in this movie. Like, what happened to them? I'm so confused. I am happy that the two funny guards from the first Pirates movie are back in this film. They're in uh, Jeffrey Rush's crew. They yes. haven't been in any of the films except for the first two Pirates movies, so I was happy to see them again. But, uh... Yeah, what happened to the two funny guys? It's just weird. I was, I've been wondering what happened to them. Maxwell, I'm taking a pizza bite. I'm sorry, I didn't ask you. So, oh, thank you for, for, for giving me. So anyway, this is an odd movie. It's an odd duck. I like the film. It's a good film. And yet at the same time, I don't like it. I both like it and don't like it. I haven't felt that way about a movie for a long time. I'm so confused by this film. It was kind of empty, you know? Like, like you find out what has to happen really early on, and then you yeah, just sort like of Yeah, like three wait. minutes into the film. Yeah. And then it's filler yeah. until the end. Yeah. You know, nothing it's weird. Yeah. You got a bad guy. You know, it's it's almost kind of paint by numbers, except, you know, like, let's just give, give Jack Sparrow a lot of shtick to do, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was nice to see a little bit of his backstory. Yeah. But anyway, let's let's just let's break down the plot. Well, since we're talking about what needs to happen and yada, yada, yada. Yes. Um, spoiler alert. Let's discuss the plot of Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Yes. So Orlando Bloom's son wants to free Orlando Bloom from the spell, the curse of Davy Jones. O Orlando Bloom's son wants to track down Poseidon's trident to free his dad. And he does the end. Yes. That's it. And in between, and in between, Jack Sparrow gets really, really drunk and does silly stuff, and Jeffrey Rush, a.k.a. old man Elliot Smith, dies. The <laughs> end. Mm -hmm. That is literally the entire freaking movie. That's, that's exactly it. More, I don't really need to go on. That's entirely it. And and, and you Orlando learned the plot of the what's that? It, it, you you learn the whole plot about Orlando Bloom's son wanting to find Captain Jack and use him to go track down Poseidon's trident so that uh, Orlando Bloom can be freed from the curse. That's literally two and a half minutes into the film. Mm -hmm. Like, literally four minutes into the film, you know what needs to happen, what is going to happen, and what eventually does happen. So there's very little surprise in this movie. No, no. But, you know, uh, I'm, I'm glad Orlando Bloom was able to do the two-day shoot 
what with his busy schedule and all. Yeah, because he's doing so much. I think he's doing um, um, uh, things. Yeah, important yeah. things and stuff. Yeah. Oh, stuff was good. Stuff, stuff is very, very hard though. It's very draining on an actor. So if you're doing stuff, yeah, you need a lot more leeway. Yeah. Okay, Maxwell. Okay, why don't you get somebody, someone to uh, brush your teeth then? Because it seems like you're a little bit tired. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you seem very tired. Sir Lawrence Olivier used uh, to do stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, you know what I bet Orlando what? Bloom's been busy doing? What? Uh... Elizabeth Town 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Probably what he's been busy running off doing there. <laughs> he's, uh, that's absolutely it. He's calling Peter Jackson every night. Are you sure there's not another book? <laughs> yeah, there's got to be. He's written so much. There's got to be something we can do. <laughs> so the plot is convoluted with all of this mumbo jumbo about stars and a hidden map and shit. And why does anything happen in the film? And, and why exactly is Javier Bardem a ghost in the first place? And he's got these like powers, like what can he do? Like yeah. what powers does he have and why? And why is he even a ghost? Like none of that is explained. And 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 they were weirdly ghostly, like like his hair, like he's always underwater, was annoying, and that that they yeah. were like partially invisible. Like yeah, I, I was like, okay, you know what? That looks really fucking stupid. But I guess you gotta differentiate them from the from Barbosa's guys, you know? Yeah. And if if I can run my hand through your through your through your ghost like body, how can you hold that sword that's going to kill me? Yes, I'm interested in the physics of this world. Mm -hmm. And then and then Jack gives away his magic compass. He betrays the compass in this film, and that kickstarts the entire plot. But what about the four or five other times in which? He's given away his compass in previous pirate movies. Oh, I so mean, yeah, I gave, am unaware of that. Yeah, like he gave the compass to freaking Kira Knightley so Kira Knightley could find Orlando Bloom in the first freaking place. So what about all the other times that he's quote unquote betrayed the magic compass and shit? How come uh, Javier Bardem hasn't been kickstarted by that? Mm-hmm. And then also in a previous pirate movie, we're told that the voodoo black chick from the second and third movie, that she's who gave the compass to Captain Jack. So none of this makes sense. <laughs> none of this makes sense at all. Like, what did happen to that weird blue voodoo black chick? She was in the second and third movies. I loved her. Now she, like, doesn't exist or something. I don't know. <laughs> and if, if Orlando Bloom's curse is lifted, then shouldn't he then resume bleeding to death? Because that's what happened to him before he got the curse of uh, Davy Jones. He was stabbed and he was bleeding to death. So uh, Captain Jack made it so that he took over Davy Jones so that he could have immortality. So Captain Jack saved Orlando Bloom's life by making him the immortal uh, captain of the Flying Dutchman. So now that he's back to his human form, he should be resuming bleeding to death. Yes. Yes, he should. Mike, yeah, she's pissed. That's what happens when you don't give her booby. And then there's an after the credits scene that teases a return of the creepy tentacle porn fan Davy Jones. Uh, 
Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley are in bed, and suddenly they're visited by the tentacles and creepiness of Davy Jones. And then Orlando Bloom wakes up, and oh my god, it was just a dream, of course. And then he goes back to bed, and then you see the shadow of Davy Jones, and it looks like Davy Jones is coming back for revenge. But, but wouldn't he be fucking human now? Yes. Since Orlando Bloom's son broke the fucking spell. Mm-hmm. Bro, he broke all the spells of the sea, so wouldn't he oh. not be Davy Jones anymore? Not to mention the fact that he wouldn't be Davy Jones because fucking Orlando Bloom is now Davy Jones, so why would Davy Jones be back? It makes no sense. If they stabbed Davy Jones as far as Davy Jones, so Orlando Bloom became Davy Jones, then Davy Jones would have died. Yes. And now Orlando Bloom is Davy Jones, but by breaking Poseidon's trident, that Wait. Releases all of the spells and curses. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Can, can Tasha, can you, can you say that again? Can you run through that scenario again? Because when you said it, it sounded just like a jump rope rhyme. <laughs> what? It, 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 I don't know did, what I said. You did have a cadence. To yeah. Your angry rant. I. What did I say? Well, I was talking about. I said Orlando about... Bloom stabbed Davy Jones's heart, so Davy Jones is dead. I, I fucking lost it. What did they say? <laughs> My mother says to pick this one. Davy Jones is dead because Orlando Bloom stabbed, stabbed Davy Jones' heart, so even if the curse was lifted, Davy Jones is still dead. Yeah. Because, hello? Orlando Bloom Orlando killed became, Davy Jones, so Orlando, Orlando Bloom, Bloom is now Davy Jones. Jones. Orlando Bloom is Davy Jones, so Davy Jones is dead. Yeah. So then... If Davy Jones is around, Davy Jones should be a human, not a tentacle, Japanese tentacle porn monster. Yeah, right. but if the curse was broken, Davy Jones would have been dead because of old age anyway. If he wasn't, his heart was literally stabbed. So he'd be dead even if he hadn't died from old age. Yeah. And if the curse was lifted, Orlando Bloom should have died as well from, you know, bleeding to death. Yeah. It's not something you recover from in that time period sorry yeah. yeah oh my god you're bleeding to death better. you know what we you know what you need <laughs> leeches i thought you were dead i got better <laughs> yeah. like, and no. and <laughs> they were going they were searching for the trident of poseidon okay See, this great magical point. artifact of the sea and yeah. and didn't it break really fucking easy? It did break really fucking easy. And also, the existence of Poseidon's trident means Poseidon was real. Like, But no one talks about this? Like, why is fucking Poseidon alive? Like, how? Like, I'm confused as to your mythology. <laughs> yes. No. Um, it, the commercials made it seem like this is the it's all be it's over yeah but what the commercials really mean is this is the beginning of the end of the series yes. so they've got 20 well yeah. Johnny Depp has more oranges and yeah. tunnels yeah he has hamster tunnels that he needs to build between his mansions uh, I'm telling you they gotta go they got, the next movie they gotta be in space um if, no cause if he broke Poseidon's trident then Poseidon's probably gonna come after his punk ass no just saying Poseidon, Poseidon is going to be played by another um, Beck Bennett character. He doesn't have a lot of impressions, so I guess well, you, you, in the next in the next movie, it, it, uh, Poseidon's going to be have to be played by Mike Pence. Well, you do the Stargate thing, okay? So Poseidon is pissed. Poseidon is coming after him, but we find out that Poseidon is actually an alien. And then Captain Jack Sparrow steals his spaceship, you know, and, right. and they're chasing through space. I, I am fully on board with that. I am fully on board with your monsters it, versus aliens plan. It's, it's time. It's time for them to go into space. It, it, it's definitely reached that level of, of bad. We can start combining Disney rides. Disney's Pirates of the Space Mountain. Yes. Yes. And then in the end credits sequence, 
uh, Captain Jack meets Indiana Jones. Yes. <laughs> so Pirates of the Space Mountain 2, the Indiana Jones ride. All right. That works. Because so much of this film just doesn't make sense at all. But it doesn't matter that they don't care about the series not making sense as long as the movie is making fucking money that's all that matters to the disney corporation they don't care that there are all of these questions and all of these plot holes and yada 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 and that boys and girls and apes and squirrels that is this week's moral if you're a success in hollywood fuck logic (laughs) Fuck fuck it in the ass that is the moral of this week's episode and finally Finally this week, here is this week's free band name for any bands out there looking for a band name. Here is this week's free band name, Menopausal Shusha. Okay. That is your free band name this week. Somewhere out there, there is a band who, who, uh, you you know, you're going to want to claim that free band name now. Because that (laughs) band name, Menopausal Shusha, is going to be going fast. But that's all I got. You got anything? Uh, I do not. Yeah, I think, and maybe this is just me talking here, um, but I think this has been a pretty good episode. I think this has been a damn good episode. Bunny, such foul language. <laughs> well, what's me. what's next week's movie? Next week. We are doing Blazing Saddles because it's leaving Netflix uh, on July 1st. Yes. That is what we are doing next week. I do not remember the last time I saw that goddamn movie. I, 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 I love it, and I have heard it being called racist. I love it, but I honestly, I don't think I've seen it for like 18 years. Yeah. So, yeah, I, it's going to be like I've seen, I'm seeing it again for the first time. So that should be interesting for me. Cool, cool. And Young yeah. Frankenstein is on Netflix, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that one. We're definitely going to have to do that before okay. it leaves. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, it's okay, Eleanor, it's okay. It's not really Frankenstein, it's Young Frankenstein, so you don't have to be scared. And besides, Eleanor, it's pronounced Frankenstein. Yes. Yeah, it's okay, Eleanor. So, until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens! Do 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 Eleanor, you don't want to help me? Play the podcast out? No? Okay, you just keep beating. Do 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 Eleanor, sing. Subtle. Take it back. Do 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 do